Hey guys, how's it going? It's good to see you guys again. That was really sad. Um, that is something that I really, really want to talk about today because um, what you guys just saw there basically was a helicopter that became overpitched and the overpitching led to LTE, which is loss of tail rotor effectiveness. And essentially after he started spinning around in circles, um, he ended up obviously crashing the, the helicopter into the water. In our training, we spend a lot of time focusing on that. We, we do a lot of mountain training um, and we're doing our absolute best to um, give students opportunities and ways to avoid getting ever getting into a situation like that. That situation should have never happened in my eyes. Um, it should have been easily, easily avoidable. And, um, and I want to today basically talk you guys through a few ways that I think you can avoid something like that. Let's take a second and look back through that whole video just so you guys can see the lead up of how it actually happened. Okay, so you guys saw him come in. Um, he should have done his approach and done a power check before he, uh, before he even came into a hover. Um, he didn't, unfortunately. And when he did decide to stop, what he was actually waiting for, you guys saw there was a couple of people on the beaches. He was uh, actually waiting for the, the people to clear off stuff off the beach so he could come in for landing. Instead of just uh, staying up in, a, in an orbit, maybe keeping 50 knots, uh, waiting for the beach to clear off and then shooting his approach, um, he decided that he was gonna come into a hover out over the water, wait for them to clear off the beach and then go in for landing. Not a great idea, particularly if you haven't done a power check yet. So if you know that you have sufficient power, that is, um, it's more acceptable, but it's still not something that you would ever want to do is to hover out over the water. Um, I'm going to show you at the end of this video uh, what a very easy, quick power check is. You can confirm that A, you have enough power and B, you have enough tail rotor effectiveness um, to be able to actually do something like this, okay? Um, so in my eyes, um, he should have, uh, realize well let's, let's just talk about what actually happened so um, the helicopter once he got into a hover the helicopter started to run out of power the engine simply couldn't have didn't have enough power to keep the blades spinning fast enough okay so when that happens the uh, rotor blades will actually slow down this is called over pitching okay so when you have full throttle on the helicopter if it's a turbine it's at full throttle anyways but there's just simply isn't any more uh, throttle that can be added or any more fuel that can be added and uh, so the engine is simply out of power. It's running at its maximum horsepower. And uh, when that happens, the, the helicopter wants to sink. You're raising the collective. That's gonna put more pitch on the blades. The blades will slow down because they just simply can't keep, the engine can't keep them going fast enough. And um, when that happens, the helicopter will typically start to sink. Okay, now if you have uh, ground immediately underneath you, you're going to sink into the ground. Normally, if you have a really good landing surface underneath you, uh, you'll just sink softly onto the ground and, and it won't typically be that big of a deal. If he was right over the edge of the beach um, and he had started to over pitch, he could just kind of lower the collective a little bit. Uh, he'd be forced to land, but he would be able to just go ahead and land it on that beach, okay? Um, so that's the first issue, that, that's um, over pitching, okay? Now, the second issue in this situation was that he actually started to develop what was called LTE. So the tail rotor doesn't have enough authority to actually keep the helicopter straight anymore. Now, I think in this situation, if he would have shoved a little extra left pedal earlier, I think he probably would have been able to keep it straight, but in, in this case, he didn't. And uh, so the helicopter started to rotate to the right. If he would have uh, applied more pedal, he probably wouldn't have had any more at that point once the helicopter started rotating. And um, so the rotation 
uh, mixed with his over pitching basically led to him having no option but to set it down he he didn't have any options at this point okay it was it was too late now if he would have reacted quickly here's what he could have done so he was high enough in the hover that the moment he noticed if he would have been paying attention in the moment he noticed that his throttle was running out he, he was at full throttle and the rpm was a, a, about to start drooping he should have lowered collective immediately lowered collective which is counterintuitive to what you think you should be doing because you're sinking lower collective forward cyclic gain airspeed if you have airspeed then you can start hitting translational lift and you can fly away okay it takes only seconds I'm going to show you in a second here it takes only seconds to recover from this okay and maximum it takes 10 feet okay so if you're quick on it if you're you're noticing it coming you're seeing the rpm uh, starting to decrease immediately lower collective forward cyclic fly the helicopter out of that situation okay that's for me the number one thing I teach students when we're talking about maximum um, weight and power operations um, or limited power operations is start to look for the early warning signs. If you can catch this before it develops into an issue, then you can save yourself in just seconds. Um, very, very uh, shocking how quickly you can get out of something like this, okay? So now let's look at a situation um, where you can do a power check. I call it an out of ground effect hover check. And uh, so right now what you guys are seeing is a helicopter um, that is coming in on an approach and it's out of ground effect uh, right beside a good landing spot. Okay, so you've already done an assessment. You know the area that you're going to is safe and good to land. Uh, so now the helicopter is coming into an out of ground effect hover. And now you can see on the instruments, we're pulling power, pulling power, and we're up to 92, 94, 96, 100%, and now the RPM is starting to droop, okay? The moment you notice that, lower the collective, forward cyclic, fly away. So you can see how the helicopter just drops a little bit, um, 10 feet or less, and you immediately gain, start gaining airspeed, and you start flying away, okay? Now, if you start to notice uh, the nose is rotating, depending on if it's a North American or European helicopter, um, and you're noticing that you're out of pedal, this same correction will fix that LTE as well. So that lowering of the collective is getting rid of torque. Too much torque means the helicopter wants to spin, okay? So as soon as you lower that collective, you get rid of that torque, and then you can start using forward cyclic, which actually will give you keel effect. So once the wind starts flowing over the helicopter, it's going to give you keel effect and um, so the the wind flowing over the fins on the tail is going to keep the helicopter straight okay so this procedure will work both for over pitching and for over pitching leading to LTE it can actually deal with just LTE as well even if you're not over pitching so that would be a situation where it's probably less likely but it would be a situation where you're pulling in your power you do have reserve power left over but the tail rotor just simply doesn't have enough authority and then the helicopter starts to spin again you have to catch this early there was a crash not too long ago in New York where the same thing happened uh, downwind uh, just pulled in power didn't have enough tail road authority the helicopter started to spin around if you immediately notice this lower the collective forward cyclic you're gonna be able to recover this okay and um, so it's it's something that's so 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 simple to do but if you don't know about it, it can catch you within just seconds. And there's, there's crashes all over the place, unfortunately, uh, where you're either over pitching or you are getting LTE. And those can lead to an accident very quickly if the pilot's not aware of it and he's not able to, to catch it fast enough. So um, if this is, uh, if you guys are in situations where you find that this might be interesting, um, go and try it. I would suggest that you try it with an instructor if you have the opportunity to. But here's the key factors. A, when you're picking a landing spot, make sure that when you're coming into that landing spot that you are shooting your approach all the way to your spot. Make sure you know that you have a nice safe spot to land. Shoot your approach all the way there. Don't stop 10, 15 feet before your spot, um, particularly if it's on the edge of a cliff or it's on the edge of a, a lake or something. If you're out over the water or you're out over the edge of a cliff, um, but you don't have an out, an opportunity to fly away and do the, the correction that I just mentioned, um, that's when you're gonna get yourself into trouble, okay? So make sure you have a good landing spot. If once you are committed and you're over the spot, if you do over pitch, just lower the collective or even if you do uh, run into LTE and you do start to rotate, um, immediately just lower the collective and land 
land the helicopter. You'll get the helicopter on the ground within a couple of seconds and, and nobody will be the wiser. It'll, it'll actually be uh, a non-event at that point, okay? Once that, once you're on the ground and you're safe, you can reevaluate at that point, right? So you can get out some weight, you can kick out a passenger, or get out some, some weight, whatever you're gonna have to do to be able to fix that situation, all right? Um, so that's that's the, the, the one thing that you're gonna be thinking about is making sure that you're setting up properly, know the landing spot that you're going to, check your power, make sure before you get into your spot that you actually have enough power to be able to make that landing. Um, you can do that by a flyby power check um, or just the, what I showed you there as well, an out of ground effect hover check. I like that one, the out of ground effect hover check, because it shows you about LTE. If you just do a flyby at like 25 knots and you check your power setting, that's not really gonna tell you if you're gonna run out of tail rotor. But if you do the out of ground effect hover, that one is gonna tell you. Now, let's just talk about that for a quick second. You need to make sure, if you're gonna do an out of ground effect hover check, you need to make sure that you're doing it close to your spot, as close as possible to your spot, so that the winds and the power and everything are gonna be um, as, as as close as, uh, as as possible to the reality of your spot. And then the second thing is, make sure you're doing it only in a spot where you have a nice comfortable out, where you can drop um, 10 to 15 feet and, and fly away nice and easily, okay? Now, I only do them, I I say 10 to 15 feet is, is the amount that you need to get out. I only do them if I have more like 50 to 100 feet. So I always build in a nice big buffer of safety into my, uh, my checks. So when I'm doing my power check, I make sure that I have that nice big uh, buffer there. And um, so when you guys are doing these, if you're gonna do them, uh, make sure you have a nice safe out. Check the power. You can see what how much power you're gonna use. Um, see if you're gonna be running out. And then also, um, if you need to, if you do start running out of tail rotor, you can just bail out of that spot. So um, those are my tips for you guys. I hope you guys found this video informative. Um, it's, it's always horrible to see a helicopter crash, but if there's an opportunity to learn from it, uh, we wanna take that opportunity. And so um, I, I hope that you guys uh, see the value in, uh, in this video and uh, the demonstrations that we just showed here. If you did, um, if you know somebody that you think would find this interesting, would find this helpful, would possibly um, maybe keep them uh, safer while they're out there flying, share this video with them. Um, and until next time, we're gonna to talk to you guys later. See ya.